I am Dr. Saradala. Um, I am the chairman and the managing director of Kim's Group uh, of hospitals, um, uh, you know, in Kerala. Kim stands for Kerala Institute of Medical Sciences. Um, healthcare, um, the landscape in Kerala, <coughs> certainly um, is in in comparison with other many other states in India. We, we are much ahead in many clinical parameters and um, and healthcare um, indices. For example, uh, Kerala is far ahead um, in infant mortality, um, maternal mortality, and also in the longevity of life. Um, some of the infant mortality, we are even comparable with international um, standards of uh, advanced countries. So we have achieved this progress uh, in Kerala because of um, a very good infrastructure of primary health care, which, which was existing for several years. Um, however, um, sometime later on uh, in the last decade, some of these things uh, have, you know, come down uh, to a small extent. And, um, and also, we have achieved um, a lot of um, improvement uh, in, the, um, in the secondary and tertiary care. If you look at um, in the last decade or uh, two decades, uh, Kerala had several corporate hospitals coming in the private sector. So if you take generally, 70% of the healthcare delivery, even in spite Kerala has a very good government system, public healthcare delivery system, still about 70% of the healthcare delivery is done by the private sector. So the recognition of the private sector is, has become an inevitable reality, even though there were resistance uh, initially. However, the question of public health and also how we deliver the care for the masses is an important question we have to ask all over India. So in my opinion, um, you know, as a state policy, as well as as a national policy, I would like to see that the central government and the state government give more importance to health in general. Um, if you look at the GDP, um, the the percentage of GDP we you know spend for healthcare. It, most of the manifesto says it will be going up to 3%. However, actually, in reality, it is well under 2% is being spent. Most of the countries where healthcare is advanced are all the places like France, Italy, England, or Canada, all, all of these places, United States of America, the, they're all in double digits of the GDP being spent for health. So an organized approach of um, in these areas is very much a need in our country. Um, then only the masses can benefit. The affordability of um, health care is very important. The insurance sector has opened up to a great extent, but not to the international players but only to the Indian you know, insurance companies. That has helped, but not uh, to the unaffordable masses yet. So there should be a lot of uh, um, revelation has to happen in this area if we want to see uh, the dream of um, healthcare uh, for every, every, everyone in India inclusively we, we should provide it to all the masses, and that can happen only if um, a concentrated and focused effort happens in India in general, uh, as well as, uh, you know, in Kerala too. 
Um, while the private healthcare in Kerala improved, many corporates chains have come up, and um, also it has attracted many uh, patients from outside. That means foreigners coming to Kerala. Um, it is because um, I should give some due credit to Ayurveda, uh, who have brought people for medical tourism before or medical value travel, that's what a uh, better term than medical tourism. And uh, um, subsequently, people started coming um, all over Kerala for uh, medical treatment, modern medicine treatment. It's a great um, uh, thing that we can develop the medical value travel also. Uh, it will help the state in creating jobs, creating revenue, as well as helping the unaffordable people. Um, we are based very much on the philosophy and the ecosystem of um, quality, ethics, and uh, patient acceptability or patient first concept. And this is the driving forces um, and, and of course corporate governance. So these are the driving forces for us in taking the healthcare the forward. In anything you start after 15 years, the biggest challenge will be the sustainability of the whole systems and the values. So the value system has to be maintained and competitions, more and more competitions will come. So we also um, try to sustain by expansion process and also bringing in more um, expertise, competence and also uh, scientific, um, scientific advances which happens um, in, in, uh, in the medical field. Bring it to our country so that your sustainability will be better, your competitive edge will be better. So in this uh, context, we, we now have spread out uh, um, almost uh, from south to uh, north of Kerala. We are looking at other opportunities in Kerala. We have a few primary health centers also. We call them Kim's Medical Centers. But we want to expand this um, to the rural areas and uh, so that we can give affordable care for the non-affordable patients and um, like diabetic care, for example, lifestyle um, diseases are um, increasing in Kerala because of the lifestyle changes which is happening. And uh, here also we are going to concentrate. We also have um, a good chain in the Gulf countries. Our presence is there. We have got three hospitals now, one in Dhamma and uh, one in Berlin and the one in Oman, Muscat. And apart from that, we have got six medical centers in the Gulf countries. And uh, we are looking at expansion in all the other, all these areas, um, in Berlin, in Saudi Arabia, as well as in Dubai, and uh, also in Qatar, Doha. So that's one plan of um, expansion. In India, we are certainly looking for opportunities. We have already finalized one in Tamil Nadu, and uh, we are also looking at a good opportunity in Karnataka at, at Bangalore. Um, so we are also looking at um, you know not only the primary health care, but also there is a population um, is aged much more in Kerala. So we are trying to give, develop the home care uh, concept. And there's a lot of scope for home care, you know, and a lot of need for home care in Kerala. And uh, this is one area we want to really uh, specialize and extend it to all the people available. So for which you need a central hospital as well as peripheral centers. And that is our system. So we already have central hospitals in various uh, cities and towns and 
primary centers were, are there and uh, the numbers will be increasing. And by this, we can drive the home care also. So we can provide quality care to a good uh, population of Kerala. That's our plan. We are very um, much fond of IT in healthcare delivery, and we believe that that's the only way you can go forward. Um, so from the very beginning, we went into a hospital information system. Uh, the, we, we started this day, the day about six, 15, 16 years ago. We started the hospital intervention. At the same time, we started the software too, um, hospital information system also. And uh, since about seven years, we have no outpatient files at all. Patients come, they just say a number, that's a medical record number and uh, without any fire. And uh, recently, in Trivantrum, we also have introduced the inpatient electronic medical record. So we do not have any inpatient file also. It's not complete 100% now, but in another few months time. So naturally, there are a lot of challenges in this one because the doctors have, have to use it and the patient have to accept the value of it and then a lot of storage problems comes. So we are studying methods by which it can be stored in, in the cloud. But naturally, that also brings in challenges because you know the confidentiality part is very important. So we want to go all the way in IT. And um, so even at this stage, at this moment, we can say that we is one of the most, you know, um, uh, one of the hospitals where the IT or the hospital information system has uh, uh, is being used most. And um, almost we will say it is not paperless, but it is a less paper hospital in many respects. And there are all of our centers in the GCC, um, in the Gulf countries, as well as in India, we are using the same software and we would like to connect them together so that patients going anywhere belong to the same organization with the same number. We are also looking at how we can uh, utilize the telemedicine for management of patients. Um, as you know that as the healthcare is expanding exponentially in India, naturally the talents and the competence are not easily available and therefore we have to use whatever competence you have in a very effective manner. So what we are doing is that in our central hospitals, we have a lot of uh, competence. So one of the areas we want to use telemedicine is in, as a tele-intensive care. So the intensive care, there may be an auto intensivist, but the intensivist in other places can be managed by a centralized system. And uh, we are, uh, are almost very near introducing the tele-ICU system. We are already using tele-medicine, you know, tele uh, sorry, tele-radiology, and the tele most of the MRI and CTs in the periphery are being read in the interventrum by the tele-radiology. Tele-pathology is another area we want to expand and uh, some of it is happening. Second opinions from, for uh, histopathology, et cetera. We get it from your US by telepathology. And um, we want to extend that also between our um, SBUs and uh, the corporate office. And that's been in, in Trivandrum. I mean, quality in healthcare is, um, uh, is a very uh, important concept which uh, we could um, bring it in uh, when we started 15 years ago. And the first department we started was the quality department. And uh, uh, it is very easy that in, in manufacturing sector, you measure quality by various parameters. Whereas in healthcare, uh, quality in the perception of the patient and um, how you measure that. And uh, that is the major challenge 
all of us had. And um, many, uh, many of the advanced countries, um, we, they have progressed in it. So today, India also is um, progressing in quality and our institution's quality is given utmost importance. Every quality parameter, we have got KPIs, that is key performance indices for each department. We have got patient-related parameters like waiting time, their satisfaction survey in each of the areas, and even with the doctors, all are measured and measurable today. And um, we are also very much accredited by international agency like Australian Council Healthcare International, that is ACHSI, which is like, um, you know, JCI in the international arena, and also by the national accreditation system, and uh, that is called the NABH, National Accreditation Board for Hospital, Board of Hospitals. And these are the stamps of quality, and, uh, but quality is a way of life, we are not looking at quality for any accreditation purposes alone. It is a total quality management we are practicing. And uh, this is um, all along in all our SBUs is being practiced. And um, the, when we talk about quality, it is also very much based on ethics also. You can, so ethical practices and ethical principles is, um, is a, 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 a virtue uh, probably not very much uh, practiced uh, in healthcare and like in many other fields because of the degenerating values in our society at this point of time. So we want to, we, we, we give so much importance to ethical uh, way of uh, healthcare delivery.